Hello and welcome back to Two Day Pass. Today I'm going to show you a test route at Isleworth Test Centre, which is one of the most difficult test routes to do here. I will be following this route with another route, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. Ding the bell for all notifications, as I will be doing many, many more videos just like this one. I will show you all the areas where people will most likely commit serious faults and fail the driving tests, and on top of that, I will give you all the benefits to driving test tips that you'll need to know in order to pass your test first time. So let's get started. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. And now we're off. So I've done my all round observations and I'm just leaving the test center here. So I'm creating a good first impression to the examiner by taking it nice and slow and steady and doing lots of observations. So now we're approaching the gates on the way out. Now on the way out, it's not too bad. The metal chunk is in the middle of the road, just off to the side. So I'm not gonna hit that with my car down there in the center of the road. You will always go left. So I've checked my interior mirror and my left exterior mirror and signaled left. See how slowly I'm going and how I'm checking multiple times before actually exiting the test center as the observations or visibility is very difficult there. I've approached the next junction now and I'm turning left again. So check my mirrors, signal and a similar method here which is called peep and creep. Just taking my time to make sure I can see the road that I'm about to drive out onto clearly before I do. So now we're on a little road with a little mini roundabout. There's no traffic on the right, so I can proceed to follow the road ahead. If I have traffic on the right, I need to stop at a roundabout to give priority to the car or vehicle on the right. This road is a 20 mile an hour road, and we usually know that because there'll be signs or speed bumps. Now, some roads can be 30 miles an hour with speed bumps, but I wouldn't encourage you to try and drive over a speed bump at 30 miles an hour, as this will most likely damage the car. So if you have a road with speed bumps, it will most definitely be 20 miles an hour, but do take care just in case the road is a 30. Maybe you can increase your speed slightly, but for your driving test, I wouldn't encourage that. And if you're looking down the road now, we're thinking about the oncoming traffic. We have buses on this road. We have large vehicles in the center of the road. So there's quite a high chance that I'd have to stop. Look how the oncoming vehicle is over the center line. That shows me that there will be no space to continue. And I must come to a nice, slow, smooth, safe stop to the side of the road where it's convenient. Now I'm gonna turn left at this mini roundabout, checking my mirrors, signaling left, and there's no traffic on the right side. So again, I can proceed. I'm still on a 20 mile an hour road and it's indicated by the speed limit being painted onto the road surface. So it's quite easy to see as I'm looking at the road, I will see that down there on the middle of my lane and I'll know the speed limit is 20. I have some traffic emerging out from the side road there. They do need to give priority to me. So it's just something to take care of just in case they jump out without warning and drive out in front of you. So you just wanna be able to make sure that you've noticed that traffic in case of any dangerous drivers, you may need to slow slightly or even come to a stop, worst case scenario. Still on a 20 mile an hour road and now I'm doing roughly 15 miles an hour as I have oncoming cars and parked vehicles on the left. I'm keeping roughly a meter from the parked vehicles on the left and I'm currently holding a speed of about 70 miles an hour, not 70, 17 miles an hour. And that way, if I'm doing a slow enough speed, it makes it a lot easier for me to sort of judge my distance from the cars on the left. So if I go too fast, that will become harder or pretty much dangerous to a point where you might fail your driving test. So I would encourage you, 20 mile an hour, stick to 20 mile an hour, obviously. But when you get the less space situation with the parked cars, oncoming vehicles, you need to take even less speed than 20. So less space, less speed. Parked cars, oncoming cars, 
this is a situation where meeting is most likely going to happen. Look at this with the big red monster here. It's over the middle line. It's now moving back over the line and onto its side. So it just proceeded with caution. If the bus stayed out over the center line, I would more than likely need to come to a stop. It does depend on the situation. Check my right mirror for change direction, slowing down to 50 miles an hour, holding a meter from the parked vehicles and still got enough space for the oncoming traffic. Mirror, mirror, signal left, turning left at the mini roundabout, no traffic on the right, taking this nice and slow as this is a very, very sharp left turn on that roundabout. If it's done any faster, it is on a downhill gradient. This means your speed will increase. You may panic and slightly have trouble with controlling the vehicle there. So make sure you take it nice and slow. Interesting vehicle here on the left. I think that's a Chrysler Dodge. Interesting, never seen that before. I don't know what that car was. If anybody knows what that car was, please write it down in the description. It almost looked like it could have been a Ford from behind, but it's definitely not a Ford shape. Anyways, back to the road ahead. Now, if these speed bumps here, you do want to try and give your examiner a comfortable ride. They will appreciate that. So here what I'm doing, because I'm roughly a meter from the left, is actually trying to get one wheel of the vehicle on each side of the mini uh, speed bump. And then that way, interesting, someone doing driving lessons. They're not supposed to be doing driving lessons. Um, and then that way you'll give a smoother drive. So... Uh, if you can do that, brilliant. If you can't, because that means that you're either extending your meter gap from the left too much, maybe you're going out into the middle of the road, into oncoming traffic, regardless of there being traffic or not, this should be a serious or dangerous fault. So just make sure you bear that in mind. Okay, mirror, mirror, signal right. I'm going to take the third exit on the roundabout, turning right. There's no traffic on the right. So I am putting my signal back on because it just switched off. Past exit one, past exit two, past exit three. Did I say I was taking three? I meant to say four. So after the test goes, exit four, mirror, mirror, signal left. Now that I've passed exit three because I'm taking exit four to show everybody that I will leave the roundabout. So you could see as I was passing every exit, I was actually looking over to the left, checking my mirror. Always check your mirrors in pairs, so internal to external mirrors, depending on what sides are most dangerous. So I'm checking my left side to check that there's any vehicles next to me on the left so that I know it's safe. And I do that at every exit that I pass. That way I'm more aware and I'll know if there's any vehicles potentially following me to my exit where I need to know if they're there or not there in order to exit the roundabout safely. So more awareness, more safety, the better driver you will be. Now we're going to follow signs on this route towards Twickenham at the moment. That is straight ahead. There's also a sign here for A312. Uh, for A316, sorry. Okay, that light was yellow, by the way, in case you're eagle-eyed. I did not cross over the stop line when the traffic light was red. Therefore, I have not gone through a red light. I am turning right, following the signs to A316 or M1. That's the third exit turning right. This is where this route gets really tricky. So these roundabouts, they're not really round. They're like an oval shape. So when I go past the first exit here, there's the second one straight away. Mirror, mirror, signal left. I actually check over my left shoulder. If there's no cars there, I move all the way over to the left lane. If there's any vehicles on my left when I'm going towards the exit, I can use the right lane on the exit. Okay, so now we're on a dual carriageway and I'll probably be asked to show me question on a long straight road like this. So the examiner might say something along the lines, would you be able to show me how you turn on your dipped beam headlights? Most cars have a switch down just to the right of the steering wheel where the lights will become active if you push the correct switch. So I've done that, showed the examiner that I know how to turn on my dipped beam headlights and I've completed my show me question. Now the speed limit is 40 miles an hour. The cars in front are doing 35. So I'm gonna mirror, mirror, signal left. I'm gonna 
make sure it's safe, sorry, mirror, mirror, signal right, I knew something wasn't correct there, and make sure it's safe, and then move across to the right lane, because I can overtake, so because I'm overtaking slower moving traffic, then I'm in the correct lane, and I'm doing the correct procedure. If you were doing a driving instructor test part three, this is something you would definitely, or part two, sorry, you would definitely need to do. When you're on your driving test, just a regular driving test, slightly more relaxed, mirror, mirror, signal left, there's enough distance from the vehicle that I've passed now to make my way back over to the left lane. So yeah, this is a little bit more relaxed on a regular driving test, uh, you know, the cars are doing 35, 5 miles an hour slower than the speed limit. It's not that much of a big deal, so you shouldn't really need to overtake. But if they're moving really slow, you would probably want to overtake. If you didn't overtake, you may, may fail your driving test. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Can you see this huge queue of traffic in the left lane? Another reason why I'm changing lanes. I've now seen the sign that there's roadworks coming up on the right in this lane. So that sign's just there on the left, just seeing it now, it says in 100 yards that's going to happen, so obviously I'm going to be forced to move back into the left lane. Right, so we're still following the signs to M3, A316, and that shows me at the hospital bridge roundabout I will be following the road ahead. So that would be the second exit, according to the sign, straight ahead towards M3, A316 on the hospital roundabout. Now this roundabout is an unorthodox roundabout. Bonus points to anybody that can ask, answer this question. What is an unorthodox roundabout. So yes, if you answered that correctly, that means the left lane is left only. So if I'm going to go straight ahead, you're going to say, oh, use the right lane, because there's only two lanes. That's correct. Now, when we approach the roundabout, the very left lane, and this is super important if you know this, because if you're doing your driving test at Eyes Aware for you, you really want to know this, okay? Then you move from the left lane. So I'm just trying to get back into the left lane. It's very hard in um, in lots of traffic uh, because the distances between the vehicles aren't great. So it takes multiple mirror checks at slow speeds. Even looking over your shoulder can be helpful. And then that way you'll see if it's absolutely clear and you can move in. Now, the left lane, so you use the left lane to go straight normally at the roundabout, um, and there's going to be three lanes at the roundabout. So it's a little bit strange today because there's usually two lanes here, but we've got the roadworks on the right. So the roadworks are pushing me back into the left lane, which is good because I actually need the left lane. And then when I get close to the roundabout, look to see what happens now. There's actually a sign there. There's some arrows on the road. Ah, it's changed. So the road markings tell me, this is very interesting, the road markings tell me this is unorthodox and that the left lane goes left only. But because of the road works, there's a new sign up here on the right hand side, which is, and I'll just see if I can move that over so you can see that. So there you go. Um, that's the sign there for the roadworks, and that's telling me what lane to use to go straight today. So if you're doing a driving test, and this situation comes up, what sign do you go by? The one on the road, or the one that's um, up here on the right for the roadworks? Now, because of the roadworks, we go by the roadworks sign. So that means I have to now use this lane to go straight. Now, if it was normal and it was unorthodox then where we entered the roundabout there's three lanes you must use the middle lane because the left lane is left only if you worst case scenario find yourself in the left only lane it doesn't matter just make sure that you go left only if you use a left only lane to go straight you will receive a serious fault for road markings and fail your driving test Following the sign to Heathrow now, so this is all independent drive, what I've been doing so far, following the signs, and the examiner will tell you what signs to follow. Remember, this is one of the most difficult routes at Isleworth. So I've checked my mirrors, I've signaled left, and I'm going to exit off the dual carriageway here, 
following the signs towards Heathrow. Now this roundabout coming up is a very large roundabout and the sign to Heathrow says fourth exit turning right. So what lane will you use if you're turning right? Mirror, mirror signal, right, position, right, speed from a running to a jogging to walking here. There's a zebra crossing, I might need to stop. And at walking speed, I can see if it's clear, it's clear, and I can now enter the roundabout. So it gives me plenty of time to adjust. One exit gone, two exit gone, three exit coming, and now mirror, mirror, signal left, and gently release the steering wheel slightly, but having my hands ready to grip, and that allows the steering to relax slightly, and that spirals me off the roundabout with a nice smooth motion over to the left-hand side. So we have a speed change from exiting the dual carriageway back onto residential roads, and there are no speed signs. Notice I'm using the left lane because that's the normal position. So if you have a clear road, you must use the left lane unless you're overtaking, turning right. So my examiner will now tell me further down the road at the second set of traffic lights, turn right. Now, if I've been given that direction early, it's probably for my benefit. So if the examiner tells you early, they're trying to help you by giving you early directions to change lanes or position early, and then that way you will not have to struggle with the difficulties of changing lanes late. So if you get early direction, it's probably for a reason. So now we're here at the second traffic light. I'm checking my mirrors, internal, external, like I did when I just changed lanes, signal right. Okay, even though it's a right only lane, I'm still signaling right because people will benefit. Yes, pedestrians might not know this is a right only lane. So if they're looking to cross the roads and they see that you have a signal on, this will benefit them. And they're more than likely going to wait for you to pass until it's safe for them to cross the road. Now, this is a crossroads. These are quite tricky crossroads. As the traffic lights change rapidly, it doesn't give you a lot of time to exit the junction. I've proceeded to go into the center of the junction in line with the center of the road that I'm about to turn into. If I would walk across, I would drive across, and I had an opportunity there. There's a separate traffic light there. It was green, and I know it's a separate traffic light because it has a stop line just where the pair of traffic lights are. Nobody on the zebra crossing here, quite clear, and it's uh, one complete crossing because there's no central island. So looking down the road here, we have a solid line. I was just referring to solid lines at traffic lights, stop line. This solid line means do not cross. I can only cross this solid line if it's absolutely necessary. So you see the bus and the white car here? They had to move out because there's a parked vehicle on the right-hand side of the road. Now, if those vehicles move out onto my half of the road, it is necessary for me to now cross the solid line to avoid having an accident. This is a reason why it would be necessary to cross the solid line. If you do not... Um, obey the solid line and you go over it for no reason, this can be another serious fault for road markings. Okay, we just had a speed change there from 30 to 20 miles an hour, and this goes for miles. So the car behind you will be breathing down your neck, pushing you to go 30 miles an hour because most people do not do 20. Even the police do not do 20 on 20 roads. So it's a very difficult thing for you to try and maintain. I'm not trying to excuse the fact by saying things like that, that you, you know, it's a stupid thing. I'm, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is it's very difficult to try and keep to that speed limit. Even if you're trying your best to keep to 20 miles an hour, it's still so, so easy to go over. So make sure that you pay attention to your speed changes from 30 to 20, and then you maintain the speed limit once you've entered the new change. Mini roundabout, jogging speed, walking speed, there is a car on my right, I'm going to stop. Now if I did that any faster approaching the junction, then it would be an emergency stop, which would not be a comfortable ride for the examiner, and doesn't demonstrate that you're an aware 
driver and that you're a safe driver because if you're not aware you're definitely not going to be safe the secret to an advanced driver is their awareness they're aware of multiple things all at the same time even to a level where it's subconscious now i could compare it to tying your shoelaces first you need someone to talk you through it and show you exactly how to do it and then eventually you're watching TV and you look down and you've tied your shoelaces and you don't even remember how you did it, but it's done. It does get to that level, boys and girls. Now, when you see horses, if you can, you try to keep about two to three meters away from a horse as they can spook, which means that they can rear up and potentially come into harm's way for you and for the horse. So for the more distance, the more safety, the better. And this is in the highway code. So most objects will only need a meter or door width clearance. However, live animals like horses, as an example, require more distance. So if you do come across a horse on your driving test, make sure that if you can give the amount of room that's necessary, as in two to three meters, then you do as you pass safely around the animal. Now, if you can't keep that amount of distance, let's say a police officer's on its horse and he's waving you or she's waving you to go past, Providing you feel it's safe enough and they're actually giving you directions to pass, then proceed with caution and do your best to pass. Now we're here at the second crossroads. This one is a little bit smaller than the last one, which doesn't create too much room. Now, if you have a look ahead, you will see that the vehicle on the opposite side of the crossroads is signaling and looking to turn right. So that's my left, their right. I'm turning right, they're turning right. We're both going to come into the junctions and pretty much face each other. We're going to do a slight twist. And this is near side to near side turning in this junction. You will always do near side to near side as there isn't enough space to do offside to offside. Offside to offside is the other side of the vehicle. So near side is the left to left side of the vehicle. Offside is right side to right side, and you turn behind each other. So we're waiting for the traffic lights to change now. Still red, and I'm going to proceed very slowly to enter the junction. I keep to the center of the road that I'm on at the moment, so I don't cross the center line of the road that I'm on, which will put me into the oncoming traffic. And then I stop when I'm in line with the center of the road that I'm turning into. Okay, so here we go, nice and gentle into the junction, really slow, no need to rush as there's plenty of vehicles on coming. And now I'm gonna come to a nice slow stop here with a little bit of a twist as I'm still on my half of the center line of the road. Now I'm in line with the center of the road that I'm turning into and the traffic light changed. So when you're in the junction, if you can see there's a traffic light in the middle of the junction, this is what I call an extension light of the two, two traffic lights at the stop line behind you. And then there's the one extension light in the center of the junction. When that starts to change yellow, you start to prepare to go. If you're in a manual car, unless you need to drive a manual car, I wouldn't suggest you even doing lessons in a manual because junctions like this, many different test centers, people will be nervous, They'll stall the car in the crossroads and then they will fail the driving test. Do you really need a manual car? If you do, then yes, brilliant, go for it. If you don't, I wouldn't encourage it as everything is going automatic now. The future's going to be electric and you've got car companies like Elon Musk inventing cars without even having steering wheels. So why would you have a gear lever? Okay, so I stopped here because the lady was using the zebra crossing. Now I'm proceeding with caution as the vehicle in front is doing a reverse park exercise. There's enough space. I have vehicles behind me. So I'm going to start making progress so that the traffic behind me can start flowing. And I'm not holding the road up unnecessarily. So examiners don't want to see you to be driving along like super, super cautious 
they want to see you make progress obviously safely so don't feel like when you go to do your driving test you're going to be driving around at 10 miles an hour everywhere you will fail your driving test if you do that the examiners want to see you make progress if it's safe to do so so we're on a 20 mile an hour road you might have heard the warning chime from my vehicle there that's alerting me that i have reached the speed limit this is a very nice feature to have on vehicles as it's so easy to go over 20 miles an hour. Sometimes you don't even know it's a 20 mile an hour road, so do pay attention to road signs and you will know it's 20 mile an hour. But if you do have a lapse of concentration, the car will remind you, which can actually prevent you from failing your driving test. So very helpful. Technology on vehicles, as long as it doesn't control the vehicle, is totally allowed on your test and I would suggest using it if you have a car that has the technology. Okay, I'm going to be going straight ahead at the roundabout second exit, no one on the crossing here, slowing down to a walking speed. Is there a car on my right? Yes, there is. Is there another car on my right? Yes, there is. Is there a car on the opposite side of the roundabout that might block the car on the right from going? Potentially. Let me keep watching. Mm, the van... But this van's actually going to go across my path, so I'm going to let that one go. Because he's a van, I know he's going to drive over that circle, uh, the mini roundabout circle. Or possibly even go the wrong way round the roundabout, cutting the roundabout altogether. So because I'm experienced and I know that this is something that's more than likely going to happen, I'm not taking the risk of using the van as a blocker. You might ask what a blocker car is, or van in this situation that's the vehicle that will block the traffic on your right at a roundabout from going this can give you an opportunity to go so it's very important that you cover this with your instructor and do plenty of practice starting to get the information of what a blocker car is and then actually putting it into practice with many roundabouts you want to start with the knowledge see the block of cars start to think oh was that an opportunity could i have gone there yes look at that i've seen that before and then once you get to a sort of level of confidence with using block of cars then you'll start to use them but you must have the knowledge before and then see it in action and then start to act on that information afterwards so I hope that's very helpful in covering blocker cars. Uh, you can always write down comments and questions down below and I do my best to try and answer everybody. So I'm here still on a 20 mile an hour road and it looks like the car behind me uh, is just itching to get past me. It looks like it's a nice uh, young driver there. Um, Maybe she's not too keen on passing me, I don't know. She seems to be looking at something else. So I'm looking around, checking my mirrors, seeing who's following me, any motorbikes that might pass me. At the same time, I'm scanning the road ahead. And I haven't done a tell me question, so let's do a tell me question. This is usually done at the beginning of your test. So would you be able to tell me where would you find the correct tire pressure for the vehicle and what do you need to check the tire pressure? I'm checking my internal mirror here as the traffic in front is coming to a slow and stop. That means I'm going to change my speed and I'm adjusting that safely knowing how close the vehicle is following. And I'm doing that early so I don't have to slam my brakes on at the last second. So the answer to the tell me question would be, if you haven't answered it already, I would find the correct tire pressure in the user manual for the car or there might potentially be a sticker somewhere on the vehicle. Mine's in the petrol cap. Ford Fiesta would be on the passenger side door, as most vehicles will have a sticker on the passenger side door. Now, you don't need to say all this. Just say in the user manual. That's it. Nice and simple. What you need to do to check the tire pressure is go to a petrol station, as an example, which will have a tire pump with a reliable pressure gauge. So, to clarify the answer, I find my pressure in the manual and I use a reliable pressure gauge. I'm turning left, check mirrors and signaling even though it's a left only lane as I believe the signal will benefit people. Just after turning left my finger is ready to disengage the signal in case it stays on as there are multiple entrances to Twickenham Stadium here on my left. I don't want to confuse anybody and think that I'm going to play rugby. So, um, yeah. We're almost back at the test centre now. 
Uh, we're coming towards the Tesco roundabout. Still on a 20 mile an hour road. Yep. Oh, hang on, that's a speed change up there because I got a little 20, which is a reminder here on the pole. And then there's a big 30 up there at the entrance to the roundabout. So that's a change because it's a big circle. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Coming to a jogging speed, to potential walking speed. No one on my right, and I can turn left. Mirror, mirrors again, just in case. And a very sharp turn there, so just making sure I'm not accelerating too hard while turning, as this will lead to control issues. So whenever you're in a bend, generally brake. If you're not braking, you want to cover the brake. This is a very good habit to have, so that one day when you're in a bend and your foot's covering the brake and you need the brake, it's there, immediate. So you don't accidentally push the wrong pedal. Okay, so these are all good habits to have. And if you have a good instructor, they will be showing you these methods and they will be teaching you this in the car. Okay, 20 mile an hour road. Yeah, I've got another person breathing down my neck. It's a really uneasy feeling. Even as an experienced driver, no one likes anybody tailgating. It's actually considered to be inconsiderate or dangerous driving. So watch people that tailgate you on the theory test question. Uh, what you'd want to do is increase distance from the vehicle in front. So if someone's tailgating you, you want to make sure you have enough distance from the vehicle in front in case of them stopping suddenly, you having to stop suddenly, the vehicle behind you will hopefully have enough time to react even though they're following too close. Mirror, mirror, signal right, turning right at the mini roundabout, jogging speed, walking speed, no one's there. Signal went off, so I'm putting it back on. I slightly drove on the circle, because if I don't, I may not make the turn. So if you need to slightly cut onto the white circles on the mini roundabouts, as long as you don't do what the van did earlier and drive 100% on top of the circle, then you'll be okay. So clarifying, you're allowed to go a little bit on the circles, but not 100% on the circles. Okay, that would be an immediate fail for road markings. You must go round roundabouts. That's why they're called roundabouts, not overabouts. Okay, got the learner in front of me. Maybe I'll pull them over and question them about doing driving lessons and say, excuse me, uh, why are you doing driving lessons? Well, you know what, I'm not that type of person. I'll leave that to the authorities, yes? I'm not the person that thinks they're a police officer. I'm just a driving instructor. Now they're signaling left, so I'm assuming they're gonna pull over and stop on the left. And they are. Now let's eyeball them. I think I know who that is. Yeah, I know who that is. He's actually on my Instagram feed. <laughs> I played a prank on him before. Right, anyways, uh, we're almost back, 20 mile an hour road. Oh, don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Stay at 20. 20 is plenty. Okay, no oncoming vehicles. It's quite a narrow road, this, with parked cars on both sides. So I'm just maintaining speed limit. Uh, possibly even go a bit slower if you have a big bus like I had earlier at the beginning of this video coming towards me so that you can make adjustments and if they're necessary, safely. If we're going too fast like that van, Jesus Christ, that like bloody going to pull out and crash into me. Maintain speed. If I started to slow down, that car would, that van would have drove out in front of me. So maintain speed or decrease speed depending on the situation. Oh, I wish you could see how close you could probably just about see in this camera how close that guy is behind me. i got to keep 20 miles an hour. God damn it. Okay. Mirror, mirror, signal right. I'm turning right at this mini roundabout. And proceeding to coming at a roughly jogging walking speed on the circle quite a bit actually if I didn't go on the circle I didn't put my whole car on the circle but I put almost 50% of my car on that circle because I wouldn't have made that turn the pavement there is very close if I don't turn a bit early I'll hit the pavement and that means I will fail my driving test so Make sure that you know how big your car is. The bigger your car, the more you need to cut those roundabouts. And the smaller your car, the less chance of cutting the roundabout. 
Now, the van behind me gave a smooth ride to his examiner. I didn't. I kept a meter from the left, and that meant I went over the bump. Very awkward, which doesn't make it smooth. Look at the bus in front. He's doing it. He's gone over the middle bump, which means he goes out into my path and would potentially fail his bus driver exam. You must not go out into the middle unless you're keeping a meter from the parked cars on the left. If you're keeping a meter from the parked cars on the left, that is necessary and it's totally allowed. If I start to do this, which I'll do now, look, and go out even further and into the middle of the road, look at the oncoming car. I could potentially have an accident. So with or without an oncoming vehicle, then it's dangerous. Just don't do it. Mirror, mirror, signal right. I had a student fail for that, by the way. That's why I mention it. Uh, she got one minor fault on a driving test and one serious fault, and there was no oncoming vehicle. Okay, here we are back at the test center. Nice and slow. Checking my mirrors to change direction. Mirror, mirror, signal right to tell any oncoming vehicles. If I need to stop, I stop and wait here in line with the center of the road that I'm turning into. And there we go. We're back at the test center. I've gone a little bit. Oh, God, I don't like that big lump of metal. Get rid of it. And we're back at the test center. Just gonna pull over here and stop just off to the side. And you can see the test center here in front. If you were going to do uh, your test at Isleworth, they'll ask you to pull over in the bays on the right, which say for driving test candidates only. So if you found this video helpful, a like will help and help more people see the video, but also my channel to grow. If you found me uh, helpful in any way, please put those down in the comments below. Again, all of this helps the algorithm. I'm really trying to help people learn to drive and pass the driving test first time without spending as much money as a lot of people have. If you're interested in taking lessons from me, then please go to twodaypass.com. All the prices and packages are there. I'm an intensive driver uh, only, intensive, intensive course uh, driver only, and I just hope that this video is going to help you out. I've been Scott. This is Two Day Pass. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video.